Hello, I'm Melinda Rose and this is Light Matters for May 15th, 2013. On today's show, a moon-shaped metamaterial broadens bandwidths, Lauren Marshall reports from the laser world of photonics in Munich, and optical gratings could make quantum technology portable. A broadband material engineered from artificial atoms more than doubles the range of light wavelengths that can be manipulated, a development that could lead to perfect microscope lenses or invisibility cloaks. Unlike a natural material, you can tune the refractive index of a metamaterial to positive, near zero, or negative values. It's at those near zero or negative values that really interesting physical phenomena can occur, because the higher a material's refractive index, the more it distorts light from its original path. One hitch is that any such material needs to interact with both the electric and magnetic fields of light, not just one or the other, because when they interact with different colors, it's hard to make their wavelength ranges overlap. Engineers at Stanford started with a two-dimensional planar structure that possessed the desired optical properties. From that, they ultimately created a crescent moon-shaped object with a negative refractive index over a wavelength range of roughly 250 nanometers in multiple regions of the visible and near-infrared spectrum. They believe that with a few tweaks, the material could become useful across the entire visible spectrum. The work appears in advanced optical materials. Well, Managing Editor Laura Marshall is attending Laser World of Photonics and joins us now from Munich. Hi, Laura. How's the weather in Germany? Hi, Melinda. Yeah, the weather has been a little gray and rainy here since I got in on Sunday, um, but the inside of the trade show and the conference have been nothing but bright. Um, this morning, I got to see some of the lectures at the Laser and Laser Systems for Production Engineering Forum. David Clark from Coherent assured us that the PV market is not all doom and gloom. Those are his words. He said that it's still a huge market for PV, and the PV-related companies that I spoke to today, especially the laser processors, uh, echoed that sentiment. They're not getting out of PV anytime soon. So in spite of the rain today, it is pretty sunny here in Munich. At the Optical Technologies Forum, Dr. Gregor Anstead of Fraunhofer IOSB talked about uh, multispectral thermal imagers with varied applications. He described a laser sensor that can uh, follow unmanned convoy vehicles around um, without losing them. Also, a laser tracker that can track a person without losing them, him or her. Even if they try to hide behind things, the, the tracker still picks up as soon as they come out of hiding. He also talked about a laser vibrometer that can ID um, pirate boats uh, on the ocean from a great distance um, just by uh, detecting the power of their engines. If they have a really high-powered engine on a very small, kind of innocuous looking fishing boat, he said that's how you can tell it's a pirate boat because it can move fast and get to the, the cruise ships and get away. He also said the same sensor can take human biometrics such as the pulse from a really great distance. So that was really interesting. I had a number of interesting meetings today too. Uh, David Clark of Lytron Lasers told me all about their new zero point chiller. Um, basically, they designed the chiller module to be supremely user friendly. Everything is in the front of the, the unit um, so that you don't have to unhook the chiller and go around the back and deal with all the hassle in order to make adjustments or to refill it or anything like that. They said the module has been very well received so far today. People like that kind of user friendly functionality. I also got to catch up with Herman Chewy of Spectrophysics. Uh, he talked about their Explorer 1 UV laser. He said it's a factor of 10 smaller than the competition. He also said that the show has been a little bit slow today, but they're expecting it to pick up and get some good leads over the next few days. Uh, and just a little while ago, I got to interview Dr. Udo Klotzbach of Fraunhofer IWS and the LIFT project. Here's what he had to say about what's going on with the project lately. Our project started four years ago, it's the LIFT project, Leadership in Fiber Laser Technology, and our idea was to develop new fiber laser source for several applications. And we have discussed with a lot of partners inside LIFT project, 22 partners, and we have a lot of partners for developing fibers, fiber source, fiber source development, and the idea was to develop CW fibers and also pulsed fibers. So we have a lot of partners uh, inside for uh, Rofin Senar, for example, they develop the CW kilowatt systems and also SPI, Eolite, Quantel. They develop pulse systems with short pulse, ultra short pulse, and additional to this pulse systems, we switched also between several wavelengths from infrared to yellow and also to uh, the green wavelengths. And now in the last part of the LIFT project's idea is to start with demonstration and application for all these types of laser source. You can see in your region here some kilowatt systems application for laser cutting and some application for ceramics 
or silicon or other materials. It's always interesting to catch up on an ongoing project like that. Uh, so that's it from soon to be sunny Munich. Um, I'm going to catch up with a lot more companies and institutes over the next few days, and I'll give you a wrap up report when I'm back in the studio next week. Thanks, Laura, and have a safe trip home. A microfabricated chip that produces ultra cold atoms could lead to portable, ultra precise clocks and quantum sensors. Many of the most accurate measurement devices, including atomic clocks, work by observing how atoms transfer between individual quantum states. The highest precision is obtained with long observation times, often using slow moving ultra cold atoms prepared in a large apparatus. The longer the transition of atoms can be observed, the more precisely they can be measured. Shining laser light on the atom is what slows them down via the Doppler effect. The news here is now this can be done in a really small device. In the joint project between Strathclyde, the University of Glasgow, Imperial College London and the National Physical Laboratory, the surface of a semiconductor chip was patterned to form diffraction gratings that split a laser into many atom cooling beams. The technology is far more compact than previous setups, but can still cool and trap large numbers of atoms for use in portable devices. While advances have been made in producing portable sensors, simplifying atomic cooling and loading using microfabrication techniques has proved difficult. This work addresses the problem by delivering 10,000 times more atoms than previous magneto-optical traps with microfabricated optics and, for the first time, can reach subdoppler temperatures. The same chip design can also provide a simpler way to form stable optical lattices. The work appears in Nature Nanotechnology. Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters Photonics Media's weekly newscast. As always, you can write to us with your questions or comments at lightmatters@photonics.com. Thanks for watching, and Laura and I will see you next week. Photonics is a word that not everyone understands, so I like to start with the analogy of electronics. People understand electronics is everywhere, so we can control, generate, store, detect electrons. And in photonics, we do the same thing with light. We generate light, we store it, we manipulate it, detect it, and so on. So we can uh, introduce photonics gently through the way that people interact with their CD and DVD, their, their cars welded with lasers, their uh, smartphones being made with all sorts of different laser processes. So uh, those human interaction things uh, help people understand the world of photonics.